Hey friends, today we are doing something fun and a little bit different than our usual content. So I asked you over on YouTube and Instagram, what are you struggling with when it comes to seed starting? And oh boy, did you answer. So today I'm going to go through some of those questions, taking the common themes and we'll take care of my seedlings in the process. So come along with me. really struggling with the whole hardening off process and what temperatures does it have to be for you to just leave your stuff out at night because let's face it you are probably sick and tired of dragging your stuff in and dragging your stuff out day after day after day. So for context of how I'm going to answer this question, I live near Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada and we are gardening in zone 3b. So at this point that I'm recording, it is the end of March and I really wouldn't recommend putting any of your stuff out to harden off unless you have some older cool flowers and then it's fine. So you'll see I have my ranunculus and my anemones out here and I'm trialing also doing, I think it's Queen Anne's Lace or is it White Dill? I can't remember. One of the two, I don't recommend leaving anything else out at this point. It's just too cold. Now, for those of you who are in someplace warmer, maybe your temperatures are hovering close to around the freezing mark, you can leave your stuff outside overnight as long as it's above freezing. What I'm basically doing is ranunculus can handle up to about minus five, but they're still pretty little. So at this point, I'm only letting them out till minus three. I don't leave them out overnight, but like if I get to it a little bit late and it's minus three, I don't panic about it but I make sure that those babies come inside with me every single day now is it annoying yes oh my goodness in and out and in and out and like god forbid we have a day where the temperatures don't hit plus temperatures at any point during the day and they have to stay indoors all day long which means we don't get a dining table which I know the hermit is not pleased about but he understands so anyway just persevere don't keep your stuff outside if it's going to have freezing temperatures unless you're really good at cool flowers and you kind of understand what your cool flowers can handle in your climate. So on another note with those frustrations, let's talk about winter sowing. Now, by the name winter sowing, you would think that, oh, it's spring now, we can't do winter sowing. Well, if you're in zone three, if there's still freezing temperatures at night, you can still winter sow. So let me be the first to say that we don't need to be precious about winter sowing. These are just strawberry containers. I think this one had like some croissants in it or something. Grapes. These things will all work. As well as the classic milk jug. So as for what I'm still winter sowing in spring, um, I'm going to try some poppies. These might bloom pretty late, but like I'm not personally committed to these poppies, so it doesn't really matter to me when they bloom. Uh, many of you have been asking if you could winter sow or direct snow snapdragon, so I'm going to give it a try, see what happens. I'm um, also going to try Bells of Ireland. These guys are notoriously difficult to germinate, so if they like the cold, let's also give that a try. And then I have a whole bunch of perennials in here. i um, really excited about some borage from West Coast Seeds. I'm a brand ambassador with them. And I definitely want yarrow around the place. And then I've also got a bunch of lupins and there's a whole bunch of other lupins of different varieties and some Shasta daisies and stuff that I'm just gonna winter sow as I get milk jugs because it's still cold. <laughs> So if you're into winter sewing, I have a video here that you can watch about it. Plus I'll also link two of my blog posts down into the description. All right, on to the next question and back inside. 
So before we head downstairs to the seedling room, I thought I'd take a quick stop over here at the new grow light setup and let you know how it's going. And well, this, you know, is not really ideal to get the seedlings up to the light. It seems to be working. And you know, compared to the price of a sun blaster, these still are cheaper and they're really easy to use. So I guess I'll recommend them, but I just wish they were better quality. And for those of you wondering how many lights you need per shelf, this shelf is two feet by four feet and I'm using six of the Barina lights in here. So that's six lights strapped together to make three. And then I've got them evenly spaced out here and this seems to be working. Now these go to Tia, I don't know, to me they look a little stretched out, but I've also never grown them before. So this is maybe even just how they are. My Lysianthus seem to be doing well. And I mean, they're a little farther away than I'd like, but still doing good. So I guess it's a win. I am definitely gonna need way more grow lights. I still have to put vermiculite on this and get some grow lights under here, but I mean, I don't expect these to germinate within the next day. So I think we're still okay, but oh, this is gonna be a lot of seedlings. So if I'm being really honest, one of the things I am personally struggling with this year is the mental shift. Basically the entire time I've been a gardener, I've been working with backyard spaces. Now I don't count when I was on the farm with my parents because my parents were in charge. Figuring out this scale and starting the amount of seeds that I'm starting feels really wrong because I'm still thinking in backyard terms. I'm in a way bigger space, so I really do need to bump up my seeds starting to the next level. And I've booked more weddings. I have more interest in my flowers. Um, the bouquet subscription signups will be going out really soon. So I need more flowers, but Anyway, it's just a weird mental shift. So I've had a request for a video too of like, what's the grand plan for shifting roots and shifting blooms this year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll be next week's video that I'll share with you guys. All right, back to your questions. So I don't know if you can see them, but I've really been struggling with little flies this year in my seed starting setup and it's been really annoying. So in my particular case, the problem is um, I use soil that came from the outside and it must have had that larva already in it. And to fix it, I'm going to have to get some of those yellow sticky papers. That's what I have at order from West Coast Seeds right now. Um, if you're in the States, you can also get something called mosquito bits. I don't think we have that available in Canada. As far as I've researched it, I can't see it. But um, the key ingredient is BTK and you can get some of that, I guess and spray it on your stuff and that should work. I'm gonna try those yellow things first. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just checking to see if any of my plants need water. I always like to do the daily water check. A surprising number of you were also in my DMs asking about this water can. Um, I got it at Winners this year. I think it was also at HomeSense and maybe even Marshalls, they're all related. I don't know if they still have it in stock. I think it was sold out pretty quickly. It's pretty cute. Um, the only annoying thing about it, as you can see, it doesn't hold a lot of water, but I have to go back and forth to the bathroom sink down here and fill it up. So any sort of bigger container would like be impossible to fill in a bathroom sink. So it works pretty well. Now, at some point your plants growth might start stalling out and you might get really worried wondering like what am i doing wrong what's wrong with my plants everything is terrible so all that's happening is chances are that the soil you put the plants in has maybe run a little bit low on the nutrients that it needs and this is not a problem all you have to do is add some fertilizer so people are always really terrified of using fertilizer and what i recommend is just do it once every two weeks um, do it at half strength you, I call it Fertilizer Fridays. That's usually my cue to remember that it's time to fertilize. Now, this is just the fertilizer that I'm using up. It's Rapid Grow, has worked just fine for me. What's more important are the numbers. You want 10, 52, 10 for the numbers on 
your fertilizer. That seed starting fertilizer has those important nutrients that need, you need to develop the roots of the seedlings. Many of you also like to use organic fertilizers and you know what, so do I. The only reason I don't use the fish emulsion right now is because it's really stinky. I just don't wanna deal with it indoors. So when I move outdoors, I will happily use that fish emulsion. All right, so next, many of you are worried about seeing mold on your seedlings. So the good news is the mold's generally not gonna hurt anything. Um, it seems to happen all the time, whether you're using soil blocks or you're using just regular trays like this. Um, it comes from too much moisture, too much watering, um, not enough airflow, things like that. It happens to everyone. Come, take a look. Check out the mold on this eucalyptus. Even though I used vermiculite to try and prevent the mold, you can use cinnamon too to try to prevent the mold, but you know what? Sometimes it just comes. And oh look, we have one that died due to damping off. It happens. Lots of people think that just because their plants die because of damping off or they get the mold, that that somehow means they're a bad garner. And well, yes, it's not ideal, but realistically it happens to everyone. So, you know, try to improve your air circulation, you know, run a fan if you can, try not to overwater, but you know what? It happens to the best of us. So please don't let it get you down. Do the best you can. You're still hopefully going to get some plants. This lemon bush eucalyptus is such an overachiever. Like it's just so huge. I think I'm going to have to bump it up. Many of you were also struggling to know when on earth do I bump up my seedlings? My general rule of thumb is if I see a lot of roots at the bottom of the tray, that's when I'm going to start bumping my seedlings up. If I have fertilized my seedlings and that doesn't seem to like make them look any happier, I'm probably going to bump them up. So these actually don't need to be bumped up because I don't really see much for roots coming out. So we're still good. Now, when you're seeing something like this, where these roots are starting to come out of the bottom, like this is fine. There's not a lot of them, but if you're seeing every one of these and they all have lots of roots hanging out and they're really dragging, definitely needs to be bumped up. I really do think the roots are the key thing. And if in doubt, you know what? Pop it out of the cell, check how the roots are doing. If it looks pretty root bound, there's lots of roots winding all up in there, you definitely need to bump up. So I had a lot of fun answering your questions and I hope that you found this video useful. If you are really struggling with seed starting and you wanna try and ensure your success, I have come out with a new ebook. It's called Seed Starting Success. And the goal of it is just to help you have successful seed starting. So no trolling all over the internet, reading conflicting opinions, just get everything you need to know all in one place. I'll also be offering some videos with seed starting success so you can actually see seeds being started. You get to see, tour my setup and see what I have. For the first week of people, I'm also going to be offering a Zoom call so you can ask me your questions directly if you're able to hop on that Zoom. And of course, the recording of that Zoom will be available to you afterwards if you end up purchasing later. But for anyone who purchases in the first week that I'm selling Seed Starting Success, you get that bonus Zoom call where you get to ask me your questions in real time. Hope you found this video really helpful. We'll see you in the next one. Fingers crossed it's about the big plan for shifting roots and shifting blooms. And bye-bye.